Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by Localize. My name is Ilya and today I would like to talk about storing Rails translations inside the database with the help of Mobility Gem. This uh, functionality may come in really handy when you would like to translate user-generated content, for example, blog posts or documentation articles. And in this video, we are going to see how to set up your application, introduce basic internationalization, then how to get started with mobility, set it up, allow users to provide content in different languages, how to switch website and content locale, how to perform scoped queries. So by the end of this video you will be able to integrate mobility into your own application. So let's get started by creating a new Rails application without the default testing suite. I will be using Rails 6.1, but the explained concepts are valid for older versions as well. Please note that Mobility supports Rails 5 and above, and this solution works with Active Record and uh, SQL. So our application is going to be a superheroes database, uh, therefore I would like to generate a new scaffold named superhero, but the problem is Rails will not pluralize this word properly by default. Uh, therefore, to fix this issue, let's go ahead and create a new inflection rule inside the inflections.rb file in the following way. Now, you can return to your command line interface and generate a new scaffold with the name and description and then simply run your migration. Oh, great! Next, I would like to add the support for multiple languages. I'm going to use in English and Russian, but of course you can pick any other languages as needed. Therefore, open the application RB file and add the following line. So the default locale is going to be English and also we are going to support Russian as well. Before integrating mobility, I would also like to localize the interface. And those translations are going to be hosted inside YAML files. So let's start with the views. I'm not going to provide many explanations regarding those techniques. If you would like to learn more about uh, localizing Rails applications, then you can check my previous video on this topic. So first of all, I'm going to provide a main menu inside our layout. Also, let's tweak the form. Here I would like to translate the submit button. Next, uh, let's open the edit file. Here I would like to provide uh, the title using lazy loading technique. Next, the index.html.erb file will require a bit more tweaking. So, specifically here I would like to translate the table headers and also all the links and all other stuff as well. Next, open the index view and here let's translate the title as well. And finally, let's take care of the show view where we are going to display the superhero's name using the h1 tag. Great! Now, as for the controller, I would like to translate the flash messages for the create, update and destroy actions using lazy loading as well. Uh, this is pretty much it, I believe, and here are the translations for the English locale. And next, here are the translations for the Russian language, and that should do the trick. Uh, however, currently we don't provide any way to switch the locale, therefore let's take care of this feature now. So I'm going to add a locale switcher to the layout. 
and let's also modify the routes because I would like my URLs to look like example.com, then the name of the locale, and then the actual path. And this locale can be optional. And also I would like to check that this locale is actually supported by our application. And the last step is to actually process this locale parameter and set the corresponding locale. Therefore, let's create a new concern inside the concerns directory. And here we are going to set a before action called set locale. So inside this section we are going to try and extract the locale from the URL. If this locale is supported, we are going to return it. Otherwise, we are returning nil. And so if nil is returned, then we are using the default locale. And also please note that we are tweaking the default URL options so that the chosen locale is set for all links that are generated with URL helpers, for example with link 2. Alright, and now don't forget to import this concern inside the application controller and that's it. Now we can basically start our server Proceed to localhost and check that everything is working fine, that we can successfully switch the languages. This is great, and now let's start integrating mobility. First of all, add a new gem to your gem file, and then run Rails Generate Mobility Install command. This command is going to create two migrations. Those migrations are going to create two tables. Those tables are going to host our uh, translations. And those tables will be connected to our actual tables using polymorphic associations. And also this command is going to create a new initializer that you can use to customize mobility. Then say Rails DB migrate, and that should be it. Please note that uh, Mobility supports other backends as well. So we can use a table backend. Uh, this backend is very similar to the approach found in another solution called Globalize. And so this backend stores translations as columns on model specific table. So for example, for the superheroes table, we would have created a separate table called Superheroes Translations. Also, we can use column backend, and in this case we would use the same table for the translations. So, for example, if we would like to translate the superhero's name, then we would have created two additional columns in the same table, named name EN, and name are you. And finally, you can also use a Postgres specific backend. As the name implies, this backend is supported only by Postgres. And in this case, you would have created additional columns in the same table using the JSON, JSONB, or HStore type. But the default backend will work for us. Therefore, let's open the model and extend mobility and then use a translates attribute to actually say which columns we would like to translate. And that's basically it. Now we can start the console and make sure that everything is working fine. So let's uh, maybe create a new superhero. We can assign its name as usual. We can assign its description. We can read all the attributes as usual. We can save it and everything is working fine. But if you are going to choose a locale now and access the same attributes 
you're going to see that those attributes have different values because those attributes are now translated. And so for different locales, you can provide different values, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve. This is really great. And so we can see that everything is working fine. Also, we can open the mobility initializer and uncomment the following line of code that says locale accessors. And now you can return to the console and we can fetch different values for different languages without switching the locale. So you can say hero name are you, for example, or hero description en, and that's going to work absolutely okay. This means that basically you don't need to make any special modifications to the form partial because it is going to work out of the box. But there is a problem. If the user needs to provide content for different languages, then this user will need to switch to a proper language, provide content, save the record, then switch to a different language and provide content for that language. That's not really convenient, I would say. Therefore, I would actually want to provide all the fields for all languages in a single partial, on a single page. Therefore, let's tweak our partial and here we are going to say all locales.each and then on each iteration we are going to display all the fields for the given language. So this normalize locale is going to, well, normalize the name of the locale so it can be used for your form builder and that's it. All locales is just a helper method that you can define inside superheroes helper. It is going to return all the locales that we currently support and also don't forget to mark all the new fields as permitted inside your controller. So we are going to use map here and simply return this array, then don't forget to flatten it, and you are good to go. Finally, we need to provide translations for the new attributes. So we are going to display the name of the language in each case. And the same can be done inside the ru.yaml file. And at this point, you can check that everything is working fine, and we can see that the superheroes can be created in one go without any problems. So it works, but there is another small problem. Because, well, in order to view the translated content, our users will have to switch the locale of the website. And that means that we are translating both the superhero data and website interface, menus, forms, and all other stuff. While it might be okay, I don't think that is the best approach, because, well, I might want to read about, I don't know, Spider-Man in English, but I still would like to see the interface in Russian, for example, or vice versa. So why don't we allow our users to set the locale of the content only, without switching the locale of the interface? And luckily, Mobility has its own accessor for the locale. And uh, to take advantage of it, let's start by adding a new menu item to the layout. So that's going to be an unordered list. Let's provide a new translation inside the EN YAML file. And let's do the same for the Russian language. And now let's process this new content locale parameter inside our concern. And we're going to set the mobility locale accordingly. So we are using more or less the same approach, but we are setting the locale of our content only. Uh, don't forget, by the way, to modify default URL options as well. Great, so now we can check if that's working fine. And as you can see, the users can view the translated content, but they don't switch the language of the interface, which is quite convenient.
Great. Now let's see how to add a search for. For example, let's allow our users to find superheroes by their names. This search should be scoped to the currently set locale. And to achieve that, let's create a new form in our layout. And this form is going to send a GET request. And here, inside the hidden field tag, we can provide the currently set locale for our content to preserve it. And now let's add yet another translation inside our en.yaml file to the same for the Russian language. And now we can modify the index action inside the superheroes controller. So we're going to check if the query parameter is set or not. So if it is set, we're going to do the search. Otherwise, we're going to say all. And the search method can be defined as a scope. Inside the scope, we are going to say i18n. This is a special method presented by mobility. And when this method accepts a block, and so inside of this block, you can construct complex queries using RL. And so, for example, in this case, we would like to create a case insensitive partial search against the name attribute. And that's it. That should work. Let's return to our our website now and let's try to search for different superheroes in different languages and as you can see it works just great that's basically it we have discussed how to integrate mobility into your application. We have seen it in action. Also note that the textual version of this tutorial is available in localized blog. The source code uh, can be found on GitHub, so feel free to utilize this code. And that's pretty much it for today, folks. I thank you for staying with me and until the next time.